Intel is trying and they are trying very hard to survive in this cutthroat GPU market. They have just released this new GPU card which is priced just around 349 US dollars. In this video, I am going to tell you all about this card technically, what it is good for, how it compares to Nvidia's GPU card and which card to be exact and I am also going to give you my own thoughts and recommendations if people buy it, should buy it or not and then also what exactly Intel should be doing in order to compete in my humble opinion. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member of the channel as that helps a lot. So let's go back and check what Intel has exactly done with this card. If you have been following my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of cheaper and available GPUs for all. And that is why we keep looking for a GPU which would break Nvidia's monopoly. Nothing against Nvidia, but we all need something which is affordable and where we could run AI workloads locally without really worrying about out of memory errors or just thinking about selling a kidney to afford a GPU card. When we talk about GPUs in 2025, the conversation usually starts and ends with NVIDIA. They dominate AI workloads, they dominate gaming, and they dominate pricing. But this week, Intel has thrown a very interesting curveball, the launch of Intel Arc Pro B50 GPU, which is priced at $349. US dollar and that is a welcome sign. I'm not really throwing Intel under the bus, but we have to compare and evaluate it objectively. So let's set the stage. GPUs today are not just about gaming. They are all about AI, LLM inference, 3D design, engineering, video editing, and a whole lot more. For people who cannot afford 10,000 and we, you know, plus NVIDIA cards, and I'm talking about US dollars or even, you know, secondhand ones around 5,000 US dollars, and that if you can get them. This Intel card feels like a small but meaningful rebellion. So what exactly is this Arc Pro B50? On paper, if you look at its specs, they are actually quite interesting uh, to be fair. So it has 16 GP GDDR6 GPU with 224 GB per second of bandwidth, 16 XC cores, 128 XMX AI acceleration engines, and 16 ray tracing units. It runs at just 70 watts, doesn't even need an external power connector, and fits in a dual slot low profile form factor. This thing is small, efficient, and very much aimed at professionals running AI inference CAD and content creation, but of course not for hardcore gamers and definitely not for AI fine tuning and training. But here is a kicker. People immediately compared um, it to Nvidia GPU card, but I think we should be fair there instead of going with every Nvidia GPU card, we have to go with select few because not every Nvidia's GPU card matches with it. So let me show you the closest comparison which I think is viable and let me explain what exactly is happening here. So if you look here, you will see that RTX 2000 ADA SFF might be a closest bet here. Why? Because they share a lot in common. Small form factor, 16 GB memory, 70 watt power draw, and the same target audience. The difference, Nvidia's card sells for around, I would say, uh, 800 to 900 US dollars, while Intel is dropping this at 349 US dollars, which is even less than half the price. If you look at the table, you can see Intel's play. The B50 is basically going to toe to toe with Nvidia's 2000 ADA SFF, but for half the price, that's a direct shot at professionals who want something compact and power efficient without paying Nvidia's premium tax. Now let's be clear, software support is still Intel's 
Achilles heel, Nvidia's CUDA ecosystem is miles ahead and for AI researchers or developers that, that's often the deciding factor. But for the workloads that don't need CUDA or for users just doing inference or design work, the ARC Pro B50 suddenly looks like a very rational choice. Of course, there are trade-offs. The 224 GB per, uh, per second memory bandwidth is quite underwhelming for 2025 as we are uh, standing in September, especially for AI workloads where large models chew through memory like crazy. Compare that to even older cards like a Tesla P40 from nearly a decade ago with 347 GB per second and you start to see why people are call, you know, calling ND, you know, an Intel to really speed up their game and I'm one of them and I keep telling them in every video that they really need to step up. They are bandwidth strangled and that hurts when you want to run big AI workloads and that is only going to go bigger and bigger. So I think that I'm also a bit sort of disappointed that this card only ships with 16 GB. Well, look, in 2025, I think GPUs should start thinking way, way more than 16 GB um, because that simply doesn't cut it, in my opinion. 16 GB is not even for starters these days. And you see me covering models and AI tools every day, at least they are around uh, 20 GB. Yes, you can run them in quantized fashion, but then again. So I think that maybe Intel could come up with some sort of modular VRAM slots or maybe NVMe cap expandability. But Intel, <clears throat> sorry, but Intel has to really choose a, you know, safe, cheap configuration instead of pushing the envelope here. But again, I think, um, if you compare it to GE Force RTX 2060, I think it is slightly better than that. And of course, speed wise, maybe at par with 3050 from Nvidia. But having said that, I think we have to really uh, look at the bigger picture. So what is my take? Would I buy it or not? Well, at 349 US dollars, this B50 card is not revolutionary, but it is disruptive. Intel is undercutting nvidia in one place nvidia has been most comfortable which is small form factor workstation gpus but the question is can intel keep them actually available at this price if the street price creeps closer to uh, even closer to i would say 500 then it is just business as usual no one is going to buy that uh, in my opinion so i would just call it a niche buy if you need low power, compact design and decent memory capacity at a fair price and you just uh, can live with Intel software, then I think there is uh, a fair chance or it's a fair price. But if you are chasing raw bandwidth, CUDA compatibility or large model training fine tuning, I don't think so. This card is good for that. So this card in one line is half a step forward and half a missed opportunity at 350 it's attractive but then it is again bandwidth strangled so that is my take i'm very very keen to know and hear your thoughts because you guys are the best judge i also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are iGent, which is the world's first multi-agent workforce desktop application, empowering you to build, manage, and deploy a custom AI workforce that can turn your most complex workflows into automated tasks. And I will drop the link in video's description. Again, please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. Thank you for all the support.